Welcome. This is 24D9 A video 1 and we're going to talk about the characteristics of science. I never used to speak about the characteristics of science because I always thought it was pretty well um, understood. And what I found is that these days people are doubting science and so I think as engineers and scientists we need to have some background knowledge to defend what we do. So first of all what's the definition of science and I would say a good definition is that science is the search for truth in the physical universe. We try and find out what's going on and we try to explain it but we're looking at observations and trying to see the patterns. We don't make stuff up. We basically look and see what's there and we, we try to describe it clearly. And then the second thing is, what's the scientific method? People actually have different uh, uh, starting points on this. Some people go into the lab and experience things and, and then have good ideas that come from that. And other people go to the library and read things and have good ideas that come from that. But basically, the scientific method is that we, we recognize there's something that needs to be discovered or figured out. And then we hypothesize based on our past reading or experience about what might be going on. And if that's going on, we predict what will happen if we change something. And then we go into the lab and we test it. And then based on the outcome of the test, we either continue along that line of thought or we modify our picture. And over time, we generalize. So it goes recognize, hypothesize, predict, test, and generalize. And if the thing is so bizarre we can't test it, maybe it's very, very, very high energy physics, then some would argue and say that's not really science and, until we are able to test something. Now, you can argue that philosophically backwards and forwards. But on everyday science, we can go into the lab and test it, and that's the way the process works. In terms of terminology, there's some words that are used well and some words, words that are used not so well. Uh, scientific hypothesis is a tested, educated guess. You've got experience, you've got reading, you think that A is going to happen when you do B. That's a hypothesis. Uh, scientific law is an extremely well-tested hypothesis. You, many, many other people, over a long period of time have examine something and you've got a consensus on the answer so that becomes a law and then a scientific theory this is the word that's poorly used very often scientific theory is a synthesis of these well-tested hypotheses so if you get a whole group of hypotheses that are in an area then you can build a theory of the science in that area. So far, rather than it's just a theory, we should be saying, oh my word, it's a theory. It is the crown jewel of the scientific process. And people inside science and outside science tend to misuse the word theory. It's used an, an incorrectly an awful lot in, in the news and it drives people in science crazy. We all make a slip occasionally because it's so ingrained in our society. But we really, as scientists, need to uh, address people's attitudes about what a theory is. It's, it's not the least of it, it's th really the most of it. Um, there's some things that help and some things that don't, and Einstein is often quoted as saying, no number of experiments can prove me right, but a single experiment can prove me wrong. And in, in principle, that is exactly right. Um, we do experiments, we get ideas, we make models, we live by those models. We are always open to the idea that something we haven't thought about will cause us to modify our model. So we never say, this is 100%. Uh, correct. It's not like math in that respect. But that, mean to say, that does not mean to say that we don't know 
<laughs> anything with a high degree of confidence. <laughs> I can tell you that, you know, uh, things accelerate towards the Earth at 9.8 meters per second squared pretty well, you know, all, all our lives, all our children's 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 lives all over the world, you know. I'm open to the idea that there could be some some modification of that. Maybe it's going to be a more precise figure. Um, the problem is that when scientists and engineers say, well, we can never completely prove something, naysayers, skeptics say, ah, oh, well, you don't know anything. It's just your opinion. And that's really misinterpreting what this is about. Albert Einstein also said, don't worry about your math. Your math is bound to be better than my math is. What you really need is imagination. And his math was pretty good. It was better than a lot of our math. <laughs> and if you don't have good math, science and engineering is going to be a challenge. <laughs> so he said some things that were quite provocative. Um, the culture of science. Uh, science exists whether you believe it or not. If you happen to live in a society that believes in science, then you will make good decisions about the future. If you happen to live in a society that does not believe in science, then you will make poor decisions about the future. If you make the right decision, it will be luck rather than good science. Uh, as we're all in competition with each other, all the different societies, then if you're in one that does not believe in science, don't expect to prosper. Um, Science is a, as a process is ethical. Individual scientists might lack ethics, but the process has checks and balances, and it may be slow, but it will actually catch out those individuals. And in, from an individual career basis, if you're caught in a big fib, that can be a career ender. So be very careful about that. In my experiences, engineering departments take ethics very seriously. Um, scientific process is based on dispassionate observation and testing. That's not to say that scientists don't care about the future, about their ideas. I've seen some huge arguments at uh, science conferences, big personal issues. But if you like, the literature is impersonal. We write down what we think formally and it's read by people and they respond formally, politely, etc. We let the facts speak for themselves. Um, we let, this, let the facts decide what's said, let's say that. Um, but people do get um, emotionally attached to ideas and while they're hashing out the ideas, the passions do rise. So I don't think everybody's very... Uh, dispassionate, they're not. Uh, the scientific process is competitive and it is very competitive. If I could prove Albert Einstein wrong, I would do it in a heartbeat. Um, if I could prove you wrong, frankly, I would do it. I'd do it in a professional way, but the fact is, if I am the person who is able to prove some of my colleagues wrong, my star rises and I get more chance of getting that better job in the future. Um, irrespective of the fact that that's good for the society. It's good for the society that the, the, the correct ideas uh, are, are, are accepted. So it is very competitive. The idea that we sit around making stuff up is laughable. If you've been around science, you just know that that's, that's, that would never work like that. Somebody would point out the, 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 the problems in your science and prove it and their star would rise. Um, and then the scientific process is slow. This tends to be an issue these days. Um, we tend to live in a 24-hour news cycle and there's money involved in science. So sometimes even institutions like universities that you would think were above you know, money issues, um, they see dollar signs in new inventions and so they rush rush to publication to claim their stake in the bonanza that's going to happen. And sometimes, because there's not been the scientific process of, of uh, uh, peer review and the like, um, very publicly people are proved wrong. And the very same universities that have promoted this public disclosure then tend to um, feel 
bad towards the scientists that made the initial statements. It's much better to be left in the scientific realm where you publish, you get comments back, you publish again. It's, it's slow, but we've got the rest of the universe's time to do science. Let's just do it steadily. Um, so science is slow, but if we let it work its way, it will do well. So there's our basic ideas in... Um, Let's check on some of these. So, yeah, let's look. Recalling the notes, true or false, science is the search for truth. And that is certainly true. We search for the truth in the universe. And then secondly, what is the term for a synthesis of scientific laws? And a synthesis of scientific laws is a scientific theory. Um, not the least of the scientific uh, hierarchy, but in some ways the highest of the scientific hierarchy. If you get a theory named after you, you've really made it. <laughs> True or false, Neil deGrasse Tyson said, no number of experiments can prove me right, but a single experiment can prove me wrong. It's false because it wasn't Neil deGrasse Tyson, it was Albert Einstein. But again, this is this statement that's often used to justify skepticism in science. And that's not its intent, so watch out for that. And then secondly, and then finally, uh, you can have an opinion, but it has no value until it is supported by experiment. And that is supported by which idea? That science is slow, that science is essential, or that science is based on dispassionate observation and testing. And we're talking about supported by experiment, which involves observation and testing. So I would say the best answer for that is this one. Um, so there we have it. There's our beginning. 